So, what you don't know is that I could see writer's block more like burnout than writer's block, to be honest. I could see it on the horizon as I wrote episode 10 of DC Home. Like, I knew things were going from bad to worse with me, even as they did the same with Sherry Finn. Hi, I'm Ken LaSalle, and welcome to the Monday Morning Show and another edition of Inside DC Home. Don't believe me? Here's the music. It's the Monday Morning Show. Today is February 22nd, 2019. I'm Ken LaSalle from KenLaSalle.com. And welcome to the second episode of Inside DC Home, where I talk about everything that went on behind the scenes for the last five episodes of DC Home. And yes, I'm suffering from some major writer's block. And to be honest... I'm about as burned down to the wick as you can get. Which you might appreciate a bit more with the knowledge that I write these podcasts. And right now, I've got nothing. But more on that later. For now, let's talk about DC Home. This year started with a government shutdown. And I knew that had to be my opening for the year. Episode 6, A Government Shutdown at Freedom Fried, was basically my way of making sense of Trump's nonsense. Because that shutdown was never supposed to happen. The Congress had approved a bill that Trump had already said he would sign. Sadly, though, the number of people who believe that government is not meant for the people, but instead is meant to line their own pockets and fame, grows by the day. And they're not too hard to find. You think Mitch McConnell is Trump's own gatekeeper because that helps the people or in some way upholds the Constitution he has sworn to defend? No, of course not, because it doesn't. That's why he called the Democratic proposal to make Election Day a holiday. Wait, wait, wait. What did he call it? He called it a Democratic power grab. Because fewer people vote Republican every year. I wonder why that is. The only way the Republicans can win is by making sure that fewer Democrats vote. So, they cheat. They've been cheating for years. What else would you call that shutdown but cheating? Because the will of the people was not being done. The government was shut down because of the will of a select few. Which is why it made no sense. And why Sherry Finn found herself in an empty bar on New Year's Eve. I called episode 7 Concentration Camp American Style because I grew up in the 70s and watched a whole lot more Love American style than I really want to admit. But also because I felt like the concentration camps that Trump has been putting immigrants into, and yes, I know, he doesn't call them concentration camps, but then I don't care what Trump thinks, because Trump is human garbage. And I felt like those camps really weren't getting enough time in the news, and I wanted to do whatever I could in some small part to raise awareness. Since then, of course, we've learned about more people being interred and more children separated from their parents. We've learned about Las Hileras, which I am completely mispronouncing, but what that refers to is iceboxes that innocent people are held in. People who suffered to reach our border only to be locked up like animals. And we also learned that the Trump administration has no plan for them in the future. They haven't thought this through any more than they think anything else through. They expect the situation to magically resolve itself once and if they are out of office. 
In short, we have learned that nothing is getting better for the immigrants we have illegally detained. And this should wake us all up to the system of concentration camps, after all, what else are you going to call them, that is committing atrocities in our name. Now, I've wanted to talk about charity for a while. I'm not a fan. I think that charity is just another way of saying that we as Americans don't want to fully fund our government, so we'll leave the services our government should provide to anyone else willing to pick up the slack or make a buck off it. In Trump's America, that means starting GoFundMe pages to pay for health care or to bury our loved ones. I wrote episode 8, Leaving Government to Charity, because I firmly believe that our potential as a nation will never be met as long as we allow our own selfishness to hold us back from it. Governments are created from a group of people for a group of people. That's the goal, remember? By the people, for the people. But when we allow special interests to tell us that we don't need to worry about the sick or the old or the poor, that we'll let charity help them out, that's when we have thrown for the people right out the window. Our government is still by the people. It still derives its income from us, for instance. But what does it do for the people? Build tanks and bombs? Sure, if that's all you want. Think about that for a minute, though. What would you like from your government? If your answer is now only provided by charity, then it's up to you to make that right. Leaving government to charity was my way of talking about this. Toward the end of January, I needed to write episode 9, and um, to be honest, I was coming up short on ideas. Whenever I looked at the government, it looked like nobody wanted to do their job. Or, I should say, enough politicians were ignoring their jobs to grind our government to a halt. Now, if I had to write an elevator pitch for DC Home, I would say that it is a personification of how the decisions of our governments directly affect our lives. Right now, when so many pundits and politicians on the right continually insist that government shouldn't have a role in people's lives, and that we should expect less and less of our governments, I believe that this is an important message to get out there. If you stopped to think about it, a great deal of your life is directly affected by daily decisions in government. But you don't have time to think about that because you're too busy trying to keep your head above water. Odds are. And that's why I decided to produce DC Home. And that's also why I decided to call episode 9, Not My Job. Not My Job was a fun episode to write because it brought things back to the relationship between Sherry and Sean. I think DC Home can get a little too heady with all of its discussions about politics, but I really believe that grounding the stories in the lives of Sherry Finn and Sean and even old Herbert goes a long way towards making sense of things. And this episode really made sense for me when I looked at the website for the Louvre, which I keep mispronouncing, but I'm just going to leave it with that one. This was before I had settled on the Smithsonian, and their virtual tour didn't work, which really made me feel like someone over there had said, this is not my job. Which, of course, takes us to episode 10, and a fond farewell to Freedom Fried. When I first conceptualized DC Home, I knew I wanted to write something that would change dynamically, that would hold my interest and hopefully hold yours. To that end, I decided that I would not write things ahead of time, but I would base each story off of something in the news that week. And that week another shutdown was in the news. 
looming. Now, we've since learned that we avoided that, but before that was learned, businesses were already shutting down in preparation for another shutdown because they never recovered from the last one. And the market segment hit worse by the shutdown was hospitality, meaning hotels, restaurants, bars. And I knew I had to be true to all of those put out of business by Trump. So I closed Freedom Fried. I only have a vague idea as to what will happen to Sherry and Sean and old Herbert next. I guess we'll all just have to stay tuned. When will DC Home return? That's a tough call. I leave for the Pacific Crest Trail in about a month, and, as I mentioned, I am presently suffering from some terrible burnout writer's block. So, it's going to be a while. Maybe June. In addition, the Monday morning show will also be going dark while I'm out on the trail. I have a couple of podcasts that I will be releasing until then, however, so please uh, stay tuned. Keep your eyes out, keep your ears to the ground, or whatever it is you do, and I hope you'll join me for the next DC Home, the next Monday morning show, and until then, maybe go pick up an audiobook to listen to. I've got a few on Audible that you might enjoy. Try Dynamic Pluralism. That's about ethics, and I've heard it's pretty good. Until next time, be good to yourself, be kind to others, and let's make this world a better place.